Hi, I'm Karthik, an ACS enthusiast and hobbyist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use ACS onto a ESP32 Rover development kit. Before I go into the details, I'm going to do a demo really quick. I'm going to start the ACS sample app on the ESP32 Rover and turn on and off the LED in the ESP32 using my Echo Dot. I built this demo following a fairly simple seven step process in less than an hour using the sample app that is already included with ACS. Here we go. Alexa, are you ready? I'm ready when you are. Alexa, turn on my ESP32 light. There you go. Alexa, okay. turn off my ESP32 light. Okay. Now that you have seen the demo, we are going to learn a little bit more about ACS and its architecture before building the demo. So what is ACS? Amazon Common Software for Devices is software that makes it faster for you to integrate Amazon Devices SDKs on your device. The ACS architecture comprises of four software and applications. Number one, ACS has a unified API integration layer needed for Amazon SDKs. Number two, ACS provides pre-validated and memory-optimized components for common functions such as connectivity. And these are components that are necessary to integrate the Amazon device SDKs. Number three, the device sporting kit or the DPK APIs provide the necessary abstractions from the underlying hardware and the operating system thereby enabling portability. Number four, the ACS test suites, which are the multi-tier tests that make it easy to localize defects, bugs in the device software. The ACS preview includes support for frustration-free setup, also known as FFS, and AWS IoT device SDKs. The support for AVS, the Alexa voice service device SDK, is going to be available sometime later in 2020. Now that we know what ACS offers, we can get started with the setup of the ESP32 rover and get it up and running with ACS. At the end of this exercise, we would have added FFS to ESP32 in order to set up the device and connect it with the Alexa service. I'm going to give a pretty high level overview in this video. However, if you want to have more in-depth step-by-step instructions and a more thorough tutorial, please go to the quick start guide where we have a lot more information including screen captures that is very easy to follow. The first step is to set up the ESP development environment. Follow the link in the quick start guide to set up the tool chain. This demo is using ESP IDF version 3.2.2. So please make sure to install this ESP IDF version and the required Python packages. Then download the ACS package for ESP32 Rover from the quick start guide. The next step is to build and flash the source package downloaded in the previous step onto the ESP32 Rover kit. Follow the instructions in the quick start guide to unpack the source and build them. The build will just take a few minutes. To flash, connect your ESP32 device to the Linux computer via USB. Make sure to set the power key in the on position. The LEDs on the device will turn on, indicating the proper functioning of the device. Now issue these commands to flash the binaries to ESP32. Note, the serial port on your machine may be different than the one shown, so obtain the port using dmessage. Flashing the device should take less than a minute. Now we are in the most exciting part of this video, where we will provision the device and start FFS. Let me kickstart the excitement by giving you an overview of FFS. FFS technology simplifies the setup of connected devices by utilizing a peer assisted model for setup, whereby a device which is connected to the internet, also known as the provisioner, aids a new device, also known as the provisionee, to get connected to the internet. FFS not only helps the device to connect to the internet, but also in many cases makes it ready to use. This includes registering the device to a customer's Amazon account, configuring the device based on account preferences, and connecting it with the Alexa service. In this demo, when we run the sample app on the ESP32, your ESP32 will be the provisionee and your mobile phone with the Amazon test app will be the provisioner. Now, let's begin the FFS process, which itself consists of two stages. In the first stage, you need to prepare your ESP32 for FFS. 
This consists of flashing the necessary provisioning material to the device for making it ready to start FFS. So go to the ACS portal registration website and follow the instructions in the quick start guide to get a serial number for the ESP32 from the portal and use that serial number to generate your device specific signed certificates and install those signed certificates on the device. The second stage is to actually start the FFS sequence and this involves installing the FFS test app on your Android phone to configure your device as a smart light. To start FFS, you need to log in to the FFS test app by using a developer account that has been whitelisted for smart home evaluation on the ESP32 rover. So create an Amazon developer account and follow the instructions in the quick start guide to whitelist your account. Now go ahead and download and install the FFS test app following the instructions in the quick start guide and sign in using your whitelisted account. Now is a good time to also install the Alexa app from the Android Play Store. This way, you'll get a notification when the actual ESP32 Lite name is added as part of the FFS flow. Please remember to use the same whitelisted developer account to sign in to the Alexa app as well. So here is the FFS flow from the test app. First, the ESP32 will begin to advertise a Bluetooth low energy connection. The FFS test app on your mobile device should find this BLA advertisement and initiate a connection. Once the connection between the ESP32 and the mobile device has been established, the ESP32 scans the area for available Wi-Fi networks and communicates this information back to the mobile device. Using your mobile device, you will select one of these Wi-Fi networks and enter the password, which will then be communicated back to the ESP32. The FFS app on the ESP32 will then connect to the Wi-Fi network with the provided credentials interact with Amazon servers and receive access tokens that allow for communication with smart home credit endpoints. While there are many components to this flow, the ESP32 side of the flow is automatically taken care of by the FFS app. At this time, the Alexa app should send a notification with the device name that is connected to your app. In my case, this is the second light. You can also go ahead and change the name of the light in your Alexa app after this step. In my case, I changed it to ESP32 light. Here you go. We are in the final step to turn on, on and off the LED in the ESP32. From the Alexa app, select the device name, which is second light in my case. You can, now you can turn on and off the LED in the ESP32 using the Alexa app. You can also control the ESP32 light using my Alexa enabled device like the Echo Dot that is signed in using the same developer account that you used for completing FFS on the ESP32. Awesome. So very quickly, we put this setup together and now we have a fully functional Alexa enabled ESP32 device. So today we learned about ACS and its architecture and used Amazon's FFS technology to seamlessly enable your ESP32 for receiving Alexa voice commands. Again, for more information about the installation process, please check out the quick start guide where there is a more in-depth step-by-step tutorial. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed learning about using ACS from Amazon to Alexa enable the ESP32 rover development kit.